<laughs> Actually, I, uh, I think that the aging process would be much more interesting. Instead of being born young and growing old, wouldn't it be better to be grow old and become young? Wouldn't it be better? <laughs> then you'd know how to deal with your youth when you got there. <laughs> You'd have all the energy to do all the right things. You wouldn't lose hair on the way back. You'd grow hair. <laughs> your teeth would come back. Your eyesight, all those wrinkles would disappear. And you'd have been breastfed. Jesus, what a wonderful <laughs> life. <laughs> and in this, uh, in this, I suppose, in our lives, in our this day and age, this, this uh, time, time is a transient thing. And yet, somehow or another, we, we want to grab a hold of it and keep it. We, we, we actually, in, in reality, talk about saying things like, got to save time. You can't save time. Time's gone. Motor manufacturers will, will make, as a selling point, a feature of the car that uh, your car can go from 0 to 60 in 5.8 seconds, thereby saving you two seconds. And people actually get wrapped up in this. They talk to each other. Does, does your car really go from, does it really go from, uh, from naught to 60 in 5.8 seconds? Yes, yes it does. <laughs> Shit, I wish I had a car like that. <laughs> you really saved two seconds? Yes, last week I saved a minute and a half. <laughs> when it comes talking points, you see people racing around the country. Then people don't see the country, don't see things don't experience things, they get in the car <laughs> People come down from Glasgow. I did it in four and a half hours. From Glasgow to London, four and a half hours. Did you really? Yeah. How long does it normally take you? Seven hours. You saved two and a half hours. What did you do with the time you saved? I bore the arse off people talking about it. <laughs> I see, I was in Hong Kong recently, and I'm walking by a shop, and I see a clock, a little watch, not a clock, watch. I said, the changing it. And there's nothing there. There's no face. It's just a black face. There's nothing. There's no fingers, no nails, no numbers, nothing. And I said, I said, well, what is that? He said, no, it's a talking clock. I said, what? It's a talking clock. It's a, uh, tell you the time. I said, the clock tells you the time? I said, yes. Uh, you walk down the road, all you have to do is do that, and pressure of rust activate speaking for you. Like that. <laughs> Save you all the time of doing that. You don't have to do that. <laughs> you walk down the road, and, you're, and a little voice at the end of your wrist says, 442. 442 and 30 seconds. <laughs> I mean, people, people get stuck in the watch. I mean, I'm, watches are not watches anymore. Watches used to be something you told the time with. Now, they're a kind of advanced technological machine, a miracle of engineering. They're not just watches. They're calculators, computers. People talk about it. Look at this. See this? Extraordinary watch. See, not only does it tell the time here in London, but you see this little dial over here to the left of the 12? That tells me the time in San Francisco. This one on the right here by the 2 tells me the time in Tokyo, and this one down here at the bottom tells me the time in Vancouver. Extraordinary, isn't it? Isn't that wonderful to be able to tell the time? Do you want to know what time it is in San Francisco? No. <laughs> you don't want to know what time it is in... I don't want to know what time it is in San Francisco. Yes, I would want to know. I'm in London. What the hell would I want to know what the time is in San Francisco? Oh, how about Tokyo? Piss off. <laughs> It's a calculator, really? Yes, wonderful. It's a musical box, memory bank. When's the, when's the, and they'll say things like, when's your birthday? I go, uh, 6th of July. All right, just a second. I'll wait. And suddenly, the calendar and the clock will go, 6th of July, and the little watch will go, <laughs> The stopwatch? Stopwatch! I said, I said, I said well, 
What do you want a stopwatch for? He said, well, it's very handy if I'm doing something. And I like to know how long it takes me. I just, when I, when I started, I just pressed the button, and when I finished, I go, I said, well, like what? He said, well, when I'm making love. When I'm making love, it's very interesting to see how long I take to make love. <laughs> just before I enter, I go. <laughs> and when I finish, I go, three and a half seconds. <laughs> compass, you see, there's a compass there, look, north, south, east and west. <laughs> Why do you want to know? Why do you want to know? What do you want to know compass for? What do you watch? He said, well, it's very handy. I'd like to know where I'm going, which direction I'm going. When I'm making love, I can go north by northwest, <laughs> west, south, 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 by east, west, north. People actually say things like, shockproof. Shockproof. I'm going to get one of those shockproof watches and go, the Pope's a puff. <laughs> and they have a thing that, that work. <laughs> that they'll, they'll boast about a watch that can tell you the time at 50 fathoms. <laughs> of Christ is going to ask you what time it is. <laughs> 50 fathoms! You're down there! You're in the murk, the gloom. Somebody goes out of the murk. Would you like to know what time it is in 10 minutes? I mean, how we live by time, how we live, how we live by the watch, the clock. We're brought up to the clock. We're brought up to respect the clock, admire the clock, punctuality. We live a life to the clock. Isn't that right? You wait to the clock. You go to work to the clock. You clock in to the clock. You clock out to the clock. You come home to the clock. You eat to the clock. You drink to the clock. You go to bed to the clock. You get up to the clock. You go back to work to the clock. You do that for 40 years of your life. You retire. What they fucking give you? A clock. 